So the question we're asking today is, who is our provider? And I think the most obvious answer, you'd probably say God is our provider. But I think a lot of people struggle with realizing the depth of this truth, that a lot of times we consider ourselves provider and that we live and worry and think like we are our own provider, like it's our jobs that feed us, like it's our work that actually makes everything happen and it, it gives us our homes and gives us our blessings or come from our work or a paycheck or whatever, our money. <laughs> and um, what's funny about that is that we can see a lot of examples in life where people work all their life. They work really hard. They do the best they know how and they still fall short of being able to provide what they need or the other way around. They hardly work at all and yet they have everything they could ask for and more. So on a surface level, we can see in a practical sense, this isn't always true, that money provides. So the scripture we're gonna look at is John chapter six, verses five through 14. It says, when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Well, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. When Jesus took the loaves, he gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come to the world. And I think it speaks for itself a lot of things. Even in that, let me just say that when you read the scripture, God will speak to you personally. So it's one thing to have somebody read to you and then comment on what God showed them through the scripture. And it's a completely different thing for you to read the scripture and pray through it and be like, God, what do you want to show me from this? And he shows each of us individually something that we need. So it's very important, even though I'm doing this with you, that you find your own time to read the scriptures for yourself. It's the difference between, I mean, I've heard people call it regurgitated food, when you can eat firsthand. <laughs> and the, the Bible does call the scriptures daily bread. It calls the scriptures bread. Jesus said, I'm the bread of the life that comes down from heaven and I am the word, he is the word. But this scripture in relationship to the question we ask is who is our provider? It really, it really stands out to me as a message of a lot of things, but one is faith. The faith of the little boy to bring the five loaves and two fish. The faith of Andrew, Peter's brother, who spoke up when Jesus asked the question. He took Jesus' question seriously when Jesus said, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? And it seemed like Philip was like, are you kidding? And Andrew was like, well, here's a boy that has five loaves and two fish. What can you do with that? He knew that Jesus could do whatever he wanted. It just seemed like he had faith for Jesus to do a miracle right there. If Jesus wanted to feed the people, he could totally feed them. And then it makes you think and ask questions like, well, what about people who don't have enough? Doesn't Jesus want to feed them? Well, what's so interesting about this passage is Jesus asks, first asks his disciples, where can we buy the food to feed them? 
And when they realize that it's going to be ridiculously expensive, it doesn't make Jesus give up on the question and it actually encourages Andrew to exercise his faith and he says, well, what do we have? We have this. Is there something we can do with it? And there's actually a miracle waiting for us to respond in faith. So it was the disciples that distributed the food. So I think even though we may look at the crisis of the world around us and be over and we can be overwhelmed by that crisis, or we can just throw our hands up and say there's nothing we can do, or we can respond in faith. And I think it teaches us what can you do with what you have? What can you do with what's right in front of you? There may be a miracle waiting when you give what you have, when you do something. So we can do everything, but we can do something. And with that little something, God can do miracles. This is why it's so important that we don't give up being generous, being full of faith, and responding. It was the disciples that went and passed out the food. It was the disciples that went and collected everything. And Jesus said, don't waste anything. I don't think we have to waste anything. Every moment, every bit, and this is what this whole book was began about, this whole book, The Return, that I wrote about stewarding what you have. How can you use what's in front of you? How can you love God back with what's right in front of you? And we love God back by loving people. Why? Why? Why is loving people so important? Because God loves people so much. He loves each one of us individually. He has faith and hope for each one of us individually in such a way that He, he sacrificed His life and paid with suffering so that we could overcome in the end. He really does believe in us. I mean, He gives us time so that we can overcome death, so that we can turn and receive all of that new life that He promised us and this miraculous life that He shows us in the Scriptures, if we just have faith for it. It feels foolish to, sometimes to even bring it up, and that's the risk we take. This is what faith does. It makes you look foolish sometimes. And people laughed at Jesus when He went and raised a girl from the dead. He said, she's only sleeping. They laughed at him. When he bled and died on the cross, they didn't understand what he was doing. They mocked him. They laughed at him. But he knew what he was doing. He was walking by faith, no matter what it looked like to the world around him. He was willing to look like a fool. And the Bible actually says that the wisdom of God is foolishness to the world. Let us become a fool. Let us have that kind of a faith that our little bit could turn into a miracle and feed 5,000 people enough food for maybe a boy to have lunch. It's those things that we have to look for in the daily, in the moment that you're in. How can we look in that moment and find what little we can offer and watch and wait for the miracle? And if we see it, we can rejoice. And if we don't, we can have faith that it will, it will be a snowball eventually and it, the seeds we plant will turn into something glorious. So let's pray for that. Father God, Thank you that you are our provider, that you have miracles waiting for us when we exercise our faith. You have miracles for the world to receive from our hand when we exercise our faith. I praise you, God, that you made the world and everything in it. You made every star. Each winter, you send snowstorms where each snowflake is unique and different. All of us have a different thing to offer. We have different DNA. We have different fingerprints. We have different perspectives. We have different ideas. And I pray that you would teach us, Lord God, to honor your differences in each other, to honor the ideas that you put in our minds, to honor the faith that you've given each one of us so that we can actually walk with hope even if we look foolish and that we would find your miracles waiting around the corner and we would acknowledge you when the miracles come. Help us, Father God, to thank you when you do them. Thank you, God, for what, what your scripture teaches us, that you are our provider and you provide in all kinds of ways. And then you give us instructions about how to be generous, how to walk in faith, how to answer that hunger. Sometimes we need to meet the need ourselves through faith in what you've said in your word. 
that we need to use what we have and be generous. So help us, God, to have faith for that. Help us, Lord, to love like you've loved us, to love others that way. Thank you, Lord. You've done so much. You've done everything for us, God. I pray that we would love you back by loving the people around us. Thank you for your miracles that happen when we love. Your love is a miracle in itself. So let us love and be that miracle in front of others too. In Jesus' name, amen.